Good evening, everyone. I just want to reiterate what I said before, and that the universe keeps expanding, the rules keep expanding, the vibrations and frequencies keep changing and expanding. In many years when I started out on this, I started out working with guides, master guides, and eventually worked my way up to the true source. And the rules and the vibrations keep changing and changing and changing and increasing. Kind of like I want to use that analogy one more time, like the software. When you first bought, used Microsoft Word or Microsoft many moons ago, it was pretty basic. You mastered it and it kept improving, 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 growing, 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 growing. And that's exactly what's going on in the universe right now. That's why we can never know it all. And just to keep up and be in harmony and balance with it is a task in itself, well worth it. But last night I was talking to the true source and saying, what's going on? How can I help other people? And you know, my mission and goal is to help all of you reconnect with the true source. Because I always say you are the solution and that you're unlimited. And then I was told to put these thoughts down. And the thoughts kept growing and growing and growing. And finally at two o'clock in the morning, I go, well, I'll just do this one and I'll have to tune in later. Because I seem to do my work better at night for some reason. Probably because I've got less distractions. I'd like to share what I've written down when I received from the true source. What you think you create, and what you create, you experience. Life is all about learning, growing, and experiencing. These learning, growing, and experiences that we have help create a roadmap, help create a roadmap in our lives to facilitate one thing, and that is growth. Each experience whether positive or negative, opens the door to create unlimited potential. Humans learn more from adversity rather than from positivity. Have you ever wondered why? I have. Perhaps we have become so sensitive in this day and age towards criticism that you pay more attention to it for criticism is freely given with, and without thought, like a figurative knee-jerk reaction, while positive accolades require thought and insight and are often not acknowledged by others. And why is this so? Could it be because they let their egos get in their way to not acknowledge the greatness and positivity in each one of us? Are you blindsided by your fears and illusions of and sorry, of inadequacy? And of course, if that is true, what is it in each one of you that you are afraid to look at? At any given time, we're either on the road to destruction or greatness. That depends upon how you view what is going on in your life. It's kind of like the proverbial concept that your gas tank is either half full or half empty. What you think you create and what you create you experience. What are you creating? And where do you stand on these thoughts? How many times have we in ourselves expressed yes but, yes but, yes but, yes but or someone else says something. Or you sit there and say, well, I hope this will work out. I wish it'll be good. I really want this. Or maybe it's going to happen. Well, maybe not. Uh, do I really deserve it? Or don't I deserve it? Am I worthy? All these thoughts that go through our mind, all these thoughts create your belief system and your pathway. And the role models for your pathways, of course, came from your childhood, from your parents, 
friends, relatives, education, religions, and what you experience on a personal level and what you've observed. So here you are, this hard disk of a computer in your brain, accessing all these experiences. And your view of these experiences are either positive or negative based on your belief system of what you have accepted and created. Well, whatever you created, either positive or negative, you chose to learn and grow. The beautiful thing about that is, in the future, you'll know what to avoid. You'll know how to think. You'll know how to achieve. And you'll know how to create love and joy in your life. Pretty powerful. And yet, part of our creation is done by letting others express anger, frustration, negative thoughts, put-downs, bullying, anxiety, and judgmentalness. What they don't realize when they're in that mood, they're really judging themselves and or both expressing their fears that they are that way or could become that way. You have the unlimited power, the ability, the gift at any given moment to turn your life 180 degrees around. But here's what occurs. And what occurs in our life is we decide to make a change. And we know to make a change, it must come full circle. So you start on this trip, the circle, and you realize you have challenges or blocks or insecurities in your life. As you go through the circle, you decide, well, I can't do this anymore. I gotta change. That's the first positive step. Then you begin to note and you research how to change. Maybe you talk to someone. Maybe you read something. Maybe you observe someone doing it. Or maybe you start right at the top and meditate for true inner source guidance. And then you begin to make the changes. Most people want to do it at the speed of light but they're afraid of because they're afraid of the unknown. So it's kind of like you're at the beach, you're looking at the water, is it hot or cold? You stick your toe into it, you're testing the water just to see if it's right. So the average person travels slowly, takes five steps forward, maybe three backwards, but has a net gain of two. And they keep going forward forward and forward, little by little, some with trepidation and doubt and fear, but they know that they've got to change, so they force themselves. And just till they come to the end, 360 degree circle, degree number 358, just two degrees ago now, the ego steps in, creates doubt, and they become unsure. And maybe someone said it's ridiculous, or they remember some phrase that someone said or thoughts that was a criticism. And what they do? They go back to zero. Then they make a change, and they go back again, they get up to 358 degrees, shoot themselves in the foot, go back to zero, over and over and over again, till finally, one day they say, falter all. I don't care. I'm going to take the leap of faith and see what occurs. Therefore, if I were to say each one of you, would you walk around with a noose around your neck, afraid that if you went too far, it would tighten and you would choke? 
Or would you believe that in taking that circle of releasing and healing, you can remove the noose around your neck? When you are ready to do that and do the full circle 360 degrees, you start all over again, degree number one. But what you have done is eliminated an albatross around your body. Now you're on a new adventure. And what do you think you create? What do you think the adventure is going to be? Do you believe it's going to be positive, wonderful, and powerful? Well, you're creating it. Bless you. Do it. Do you do it with trepidation and fears and doubts? You're creating it, so you will experience that. And remember my analogy, the past predicts the present, the present predicts the future. And to give you an example of change, this is rather simplistic. But we all go through changes. Let's supposing I'll use me as an example. I disdain Brussels sprouts. I don't like them. One day, I was over at my friend's house, Dean. He was making dinner, and he made roasted Brussels sprouts with bacon and balsamic vinegar. Well, I was brought up to be polite, and I tried them. I went, hey, this is pretty good. So I changed the past, because the past predicts the present, predicts the future. Dislike Brussels sprouts before, dislike it now. I know I'll dislike it in the future. But what I do, I created something. I thought, I'm going to try this, just out of kindness. And then after I tasted it, I said, wow, what I think I create. When I create, I believe. So now I can eat Brussels sprouts. I know that's simplistic. But that's the same way if you have an addiction to food or smoking or drinking or alcohol. People have addictions to anger, frustration, insecurity. Low self-worth, self-esteem, and self-love. Remember last week I talked about everything boils down to three, those three. Not narcissism, not the fear of abandon, multiple personalities, depression, yada, yada, yada. It all boils down to self-worth, self-love, and self-esteem. Because whatever is going on in your life, you are created to learn and grow. But how much do you need to learn it over and 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 over again? Well, what you think you create, so if you want to learn it over again, bless you. But if you say enough is enough is enough, then you change your life. You change everything around you. You change your vibrations and frequency. Then you suddenly realize, if I can change this, I can change anything. Wow. Now you become unlimited. Now you are unlimited. Many times I use the analogy, and I know I've shared this with you before, but not in a long time, so lest you forget, is people will say, well, hard for me to manifest a lot of money. Really, really hard. I go, okay. Do you ever think manifesting some pennies or nickels or dimes in youth? Oh yeah, I used to wish I had more pennies or a couple of nickels or dimes to buy this or get this. What happened? Well, I got it. So I said to him, how much energy you think it takes to manifest a billion dollars as opposed to one penny? So I get the yes buts, yes buts, yes buts. But a few of them go, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yes. The numbers just change. But you think it's more arduous, it's more difficult. Therefore, if it's more arduous and difficult, what you think you create, what you create, you experience. So, you just built a wall. Bless you. Isn't it time to drop all walls, everyone? Isn't it time for us to take responsibility in our direction and in our life? Isn't it time for you to realize that you are the master creator of your life. And there's only two things that are holding you back. Sometimes it's only one. 
If it's two, it's some kind of karmic experience. Once you learn it's over with and recognize it, it's done. Because that's all karma is, an experience. Or the other is what you believe through your self-worth, self-love, and self-esteem. Not in a haughty, egotistical way, but in a way of realizing that everything on this planet is for an experience to enjoy and have fun with. Some of you have pets and they bring you such love and joy. Boy, aren't they the best at unconditionally loving, allowing, and non-judgmentalness. Whoa! I know sometimes my blue healer, called Buddha, sometimes she'd do something, she'd rip something up, and I wouldn't get a little annoyed with her. And she'd come over, lick my face, sit there, and be right next to me, and still love me, not hold a grudge. And I would look at her and say, that's unconditional love. And I'll share a little story. Before Buddha had an Akita, his name was Daiju. <clears throat> and he would just do things to annoy me. Remember me telling a story? I had a whole bunch of magazines. The one I loved was Entrepreneur. And when I wouldn't take him out with me and I went shopping, the only magazine he'd rip up was Entrepreneur. The other five, never touched them. And one day I was walking by and actually I had put on some weight and he was eating his dog food and he'd take a few bites, look at me, take a few bites, look at me and walk away. And I know he was telling me, Dad, take off some weight. So you see, sometimes these animals are so unconditionally loving and allowing and non-judgmental. They have such a great heart and passion for you. They give you messages. We get messages every day from the animal, mineral, and vegetable kingdom. Except most people poo-poo it or they're so distracted that they can't see the forest for the trees. Here's a little secret in life I want to share with you based on what you think is what you create and what you experience. And before my wife birthed out of her body, we lived on a 40-acre farm at the 1,700-foot level. And in Seattle, it would rain, and up where I live, we'd get a foot or two of snow. And there would be no guardrails on one side. We were in the boonies, anywhere from a 50 to a 300-foot drop. And I would stop, put on my bubble of protection, and I call. I would call upon the nature spirits of the snow and say, snow and I are one, we're fun, we're loving, we care for each other. I am now part of the snow, the snow is part of me. We are friends. And I would drive home, and except for one time, never got stuck, never skidded, never came close to going off the edge of the road. And that other one time was when they had a huge windstorm. That tree, the line must have been 50 or 100 trees froze and cracked. But even then, I'm set in one in harmony and they're my friend and protecting me. The tree would fall behind me and finally one in front of me, about 50 feet in front of me, but never touched me or my car and I walked home. And what if you in your life, realizing what you think you create and what you create you experience, what if you said, this job, this relationship, or whatever it may be, are now in harmony and balance with each other, with each other, we're now one with each other. They're my friend, I'm its friend. Harmony and balance with each other. I'm part of it, it's part of me, and it's my friend. What do you think would happen with any project you get to do at work? or whatever you're doing. It would be a good experiment, experience for all of you to try. Give it a shot. I'll return it one, I'll re, not return it, but I'll repeat it one more time. And that is, I'll use it. This job is my friend. We're in harmony and balance with each other. Try it. See how the day goes. You'll be amazed. 